study, uh, we are going to talk about the off policy actor critic algorithms. We are group seven from CS5446. And I am Liu Xiaofeng, a master student in SOC. And my teammates are Pei Junjie and Xu Zihai. So, what is an actor critic algorithm? Actor critic algorithm is developed by developed from the general policy gradient algorithms. It learns uh, the value function, which is the critic, in addition to the policy, the actor. So this reduces the gradient variation of the general policy gradient, and it can also make it possible to converge faster than the general versions. The off policy learning algorithms learn from actions following the policies. These policies are often different from the target one and is called behavior policy. Note that the off policy learning algorithm can even learn without following any policies. These give much better sample efficiency and can bring better exploration than the on policy learning algorithms. So how about just combine them together? So this is what uh, interests us most. In this part, we are going to talk about uh, three algorithms. The first one is the vanilla version of the uh, off policy actor critic algorithm. The second one is the deterministic policy gradient. And the last one is the deep version of the deterministic policy gradient. We start by introducing the vanilla version of the off policy actor critic algorithm, which is off pack. The off pack optimize the objective function showing in the first line. And we can further de derive the formula into the following steps. So we can see in the third step, we just ignore the gradient of Q function. This still works and it can proven that this can uh, simplify the computation of the gradient and can uh, is proven to converge. And we can see in the last step that uh, we finally obtain the action value function, but we are using the critic to evaluate the value function. The critic learns the state value function. So we need to do uh, additional things to uh, modify this Q function to the things we want, which is the state value function. So we can do, we can just do a subtracting baseline uh, function trick. We can see that we just sub subtract the V function and we can approximate these uh, subtraction uh, with the TD error. So we just figure out how to update the actor now. And so now we, we can just do the update for the actor, we update the policy by updating the policy parameters theta following the above gradient. We use the same important sampling to sample observed data. And for the critic, we just update these, we just update the state value function. We update the value function parameter omega following the basic TD learning rule. But however, uh, according to Hamid, the original paper didn't take into account the implicit connection of the policy parameters theta and the value function parameter omega. This results in the update direction of the actor does not follow the true gradient direction. And the proof of the convergence property in the original paper is also questionable. But luckily, these problems can be fixed by simply reforming the gradient computation and updating uh, everything using eligibility trace. Note that the basic idea is similar. Now, I will briefly introduce the eligibility trace. Uh, eligibility trace is a temporal record 
of the occurrence of an event, such as the visiting of a state or the taking of an action. The trace marks the memory parameters associated with the event as eligible for undergoing learning changes. So this is why it is called eligibility trace. And the eligibility trace uh, in this case are denoted as uh, Z theta and Z omega. So we can see that the updating rule of Z theta and Z omega is as follows. Uh, note that the, the gamma and uh, the i here are the parameters. And the theta and the omega can finally be updated uh, as below. But note that uh, the update rule here uh, is not the final version because we need to uh, manage to resolve the uh, convergent issue. So we need to introduce uh, a parameter f for, uh, for the convergence and for efficiency. So finally, this is what uh, our Belinda version of policy actor critic algorithm looks like. In each step, uh, we just select an action A in current state S following the behavior distribution pi B, and we can execute this action and get a reverse R and next day S by. Next, we just compute the TD error, and we can also compute the sample importance. Later, we just update the critic and the actor by using uh, the, the mentioned rules and also the eligibility trace to, uh, uh, to ensure a, a stable and to ensure the convergence properties. So next, I will hand over to Zahan to introduce the uh, deterministic quality gradient. Yeah, thanks, Chao Feng. And my name is Zihan, and I'm also a full-time master's student in SOC. So today I'm going to introduce this paper, Deterministic Policy Gradient Algorithms. So previously in stochastic cases, uh, policy parameters converge to a very good strategy, but there are many issues with uh, the gradient computation. So the first issue is uh, the gradient changes more rapidly when it's near uh, the local optimals. And the, besides the gradient is very hard and expensive to compute and is sometimes even uh, intractable. So in an effort to alleviate these issues, the, this paper introduces deterministic policy gradient algorithms. So the algorithm is divided into three sub algorithms. And the first is an um, on policy deterministic actor critic, and uh, the following are uh, off policy deterministic actor critic, and uh, finally compatible function approximation. So, note that deterministic policy gradient is a special case of stochastic policy gradient. So uh, for the on-policy deterministic actor critic, the critic estimates the action value function and the actor assigns the gradient of the action value function. And for off-policy deterministic actor critic, it simply uses a arbitrary stochastic behavior policy to generate some trajectories. And then uh, we just learn the deterministic target policy by averaging over the state distri distribution of the stochastic behavior policy. So finally, uh, compatible function approximation. Uh, the, the, the original Q function in deterministic policy gradient will not necessarily follow the true gradient. So in order to solve the issue, we find compatible function approximators such as the true gradient is preserved. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, experiments that they performed in the paper. So all, uh, there are actually three 
experiments and then all all of them are conducted in under uh, contiguous action variants of the standard reinforcement learning benchmarks. And uh, we only focus on the blue and the red dots. The blue is stochastic of policy actor critic and the red is for deterministic of, of policy actor critic. So generally, as we can see from the graph compared with the stochastic policy, the deterministic policy gets higher amount of rewards and also it converges faster and with more stability. So next I will hand over to Junjie. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Junjie. My name is Junjie. I'm also a master student in SOC and this is my last semester in SOC. Today I'm gonna uh, present the paper of called Deep Determinist deterministic policy gradient algorithms. Uh, this paper was based on the previous paper, DPG. It's a deep version of the DPG is proposed. Um, the author has some very clever tricks to DPG and uh, those tricks, there's are two tricks are uh, abstract from the deep Q network algorithms, which is also from 2015. And uh, one of them is the network is trained of policy with sample from replay buffer to minimize the correlation of the samples. And the other feature was the network is trained with a target queue network to give the consistent target during temporary difference backups, which is be able to overcome the stability and the robustness issue of the DVG. Uh, the author also implement the other several tricks to the paper to, to the algorithms. One is called batch normalization, which is uh, quite normal now, now to use, but at the 2015, it's also a quite new feature to, to implement. And another was adding noise simple from the noise processor uh, process to actor policy which is be able to dealing with uh, explore, exploration problems in continuous act, action space. Uh, here is a whole algorithm. It's quite uh, straightforward. And uh, the, the key part is why is the, the slack action a, AT? That part was the noise sampling part. And the other part is set one i equal to r i plus something. That is the uh, uh, target network part. And the last part for uh, the last two lines for 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 the algorithm is update of the uh, target network part. Uh, here's the evaluation from uh, DPG with DDPG uh, by the author in. In the paper, uh, the author tried several different difficulty level experiment games to test the performance. And from this picture, we can see the light gray line is uh, the original DPG algorithms, and the others was uh, mostly implement uh, was all with implement of a target network and also some other uh, features. We can see in most of the game, almost ten of a nine or ten games, it's uh, uh, the deep DPG was performance better, much better than uh, DPG, and uh, so uh, the author gives the re uh, uh, the the summary is that the target network are the key features to improvement. Here we reach the conclusion part. Uh, the three algorithms are typical work of of policy actor critical algorithms, the Valina of policy actor uh, critic algorithms uh, of PAC, we can see, learn a stochastic policy and is the first proposed algorithms combining actor critic and of policy learning. The deterministic policy gradient algorithms learn a deterministic policy to get a higher efficiency. And the deep version of DPG algorithms learn, uh, uh, combine the tricks from deep network and uh, uh, the Q function, which is applicable to 
more complex problems. That would be all for us. Thank you.